Are you confused by all the treatment options you face for back pain? Are you getting conflicting recommendations? Welcome to the messy world of treating back pain, something nearly all of us get at some time. Think of it as a maddening part of a normal, healthy life. Dr. Richard Dio is an internationally known doctor and researcher on back pain. He is a professor in the School of Medicine at Oregon Health and Science University and the author of Watch Your Back. Even though it's so common, back pain is often one of the most frustrating problems for doctors and patients alike. Both expect that the doctor is going to examine the patient, order a few tests, figure out exactly what's wrong, order a specific treatment for that specific problem, and ta-da, the patient gets better. Unfortunately, that logic often fails us when it comes to back pain. Patients sometimes fail to respond to the specific treatment we think is appropriate, and sometimes pain goes on well beyond the time that normally takes for tissue to heal. There are so many competing approaches to treating back pain. You're very likely to get multiple, sometimes conflicting recommendations. We have MRI scans of the spine that show all kinds of abnormal things. But turns out that pain-free people often show the same things. We have medications that can reduce pain for people with short-term problems, but they can cause havoc if they're used too long. We have a steady stream of new strategies and devices for surgery, but little scientific evidence of how effective or safe they may be. We also have media and marketing telling people they should always be pain-free and that doctors can always cure pain if they just try hard enough. Over the years, the treatment for back pain has gotten ever more intensive and aggressive. The use of MRI scans, narcotic painkillers, spinal injections, and back surgery have each increased several hundred percent. In other areas of medicine, as newer treatments come along and as we've treated things more intensively, we've often seen improvements in quality of life and even duration of life. But when it comes to back pain, the more aggressive treatment has actually not resulted in improvements on a population level. What we see is in national surveys that patients who have back pain show progressively worse impairments and the proportion who have actually no daily limitations is going down over time. Though it may seem counterintuitive, fewer medical interventions may produce better results. Expecting a probe, a pill, or a procedure to cure back pain is usually unrealistic, yet entire industries promote the notion that someone else will fix you. But things aren't as bleak as this may sound. There are effective treatments. They may not promise a permanent cure of back pain, but they do promise big improvements in your quality of life. Things like rigorous exercise, and relaxation techniques, and greater involvement in decision-making about other treatments. The key to improvement is often taking a more active role in decision-making and self-care. Ultimately, this book isn't about miracle cures. It's about having a person with back pain take more control of clinical decisions and more control over their own well-being. I hope I can empower you and reassure you about a common but maddening part of life.